my Foss Tube friends. It's time for another episode. And it's time for another fun Friday Floss Tube update with me. I am Annie. I am Joyfield Stitcher, both here on Floss Tube and YouTube and on Instagram. And you have reached my channel in this video about cross stitch. So this is Floss Tube number 46, the age my husband is turning in May. And it is Friday, April the 3rd, 2020. How's everybody doing? How's everybody enjoying staying at home? We're doing well. Um, well, we're doing well now. Um, I, it's interesting because a lot of people reached out and were just so, so thoughtful and had just the nicest comments and were like, I hope school starts going better you know, we're in the same boat. I homeschool my kids and this is not homeschooling. I mean, so there was a lot of just really supportive feedback. I really appreciated those comments last week about just how um, you appreciated that I'm genuine. I'm frank. I just, I'm, I just say how it is. I am who I am. I am who I am. And so this week has been a better week. Um, it's been an interesting week. Um, so I, I am going to take a cue from some of the other folks right now who are choosing to put life update at the end of the video because that can increase anxiety for some folks. And they, you know, there's people that aren't watching the news because they don't, they only need to know it if it directly affects them right by gosh now. And it really increases anxiety, it increases feelings of fear, and I don't want to add to that. So... I'll talk about that stuff at the end. It's going to be quite a long video because I have a lot of notes. So what do I have this week for you? Um, a couple of three finishes, a few starts and or, and or restarts, some whips, some plans, a buttload of stash. I am single-handedly keeping the uh, stitching economy going all by myself um and then like I said some life update at the end um so yeah and I'm probably gonna say um a thousand times this has been as you can see I can breathe out of my nose this is a fair bit of life update kind of where we are since last week I can breathe out of my nose now my allergies have chilled out we had some warm weather earlier in this week yesterday it was rainy-ish which kind of stunk um and then rained this woke up to rain this morning and the temperature dropped and it's like 43 degrees right now um feels like 36 and I'm like what <laughs> um not that I like love when it's 100 degrees in the summer but I love spring and fall weather love it it's my jam um it's not too hot it's not too cold I'm like Goldilocks of weather I I don't like it too hot I don't like it too cold I don't mind rain occasionally, except when you're stuck inside all the time and you acquired a trampoline and you need to send your child out to jump. So today it's been chilly and that's been kind of a bummer because I'm like back in long sleeves again, back in leggings. I have like my fleecy shoes on, um, whereas I've been like stro strolling around in my flip flops, although my toes look And pedicures are not a necessity. Mm -mm. I'm, I'm tempted to. This goes on too much longer, which it's uh, fearfully going to. I'm going to ask my husband to do my toes. I don't know how I feel about that. I might ask, ask the joy-filled little one to do them. I'm fairly certain an 8-year-old could maybe do better than a 45-year-old man. Child. Major. Anyway. See, I said I wasn't going to do life update, but it just kind of leeches into the front of my video. So, stitching went well this week. I had, I was kind of needles on fire. You know what? We'll start with some March stats because it's April. We are in April. We survived the 8,000 days of March. 30 days, half September, April, June, and November. All the rest have 31 except for March, which has 8,000. That's the truth. 2020 truth. Anywho, so in the grand old month of March, I did 11,161 total stitches. So far in 2020, it is only my second best month. January was better. I had some low days. 
I had, um, especially leading up to spring break, that week was really full at work. And I was kind of looking back and I was like, there was not much stitching that week. Over spring break, we had a lot going on. So I really didn't have as much time to stitch. Then the weekend before we kind of started our extended spring break, before online schooling started, um, I kind of fell off the stitchy wagon for a bit. And then it's like been full rampant this week. Um, it's my joy brings me normalcy so I gonna keep doing it and let me just say my nails are insanely long <laughs> I've got one that snagged today and I'm like Arr. so I need to get my color street on there today so we'll see um so okay I had seven FOs last month I did not have any FFOs I think I'm gonna try to FFO some stuff this weekend um, my FOs were linens and threads mystery sampler February and March Animal Almanac, February and March. Uh, the Hands-On Design Joy Ornament that I showed last week in a video. Blue Bonnet Joy, which more to come on that. And March Square Dance. So, I had four starts. I had um, the Plum Street Sampler Sampler Lesson 4. That was one that my Instagram folks picked for me during uh, March Madness. Um, my market start was Huckleberry Farm by the Blue Flower. I started this week. Oh, and I, for, I skipped one, sorry. I went out of order. Winter Valentine by the Blue Flower also was picked by my Instagram folks during March Madness. And I started one this week called The Light. And so um, early this week before the first. So, and I worked on a total of 22 different projects. So I feel pretty good about that. Now I will say I was sitting going, I'm gonna read one of my things on my agenda. And this kind of got bleeds a little bit into plans is I need to rewrite my whip list because I flip to it so often. It's on like 20 pound paper um, and I need to print it on a little bit heavier of like a 28 or a 32 paper because that's for the whole year. And so that's gonna make my hand cramp um, right and all that. So let's talk about some finishes, the finishes I got this week. So the first finish, and I had not had this out since the day that I started it, back in December. It was one of my December starts. And this is by Redbird Designs. Um, and I actually bought this at Stitches from the Heart. And actually, you know what, I think I worked showed this last week, maybe. I might have worked on this a little bit last week, and then I finished it last Saturday. I can't really remember. It was That was like 100 years ago, last Friday. Um, this chart I purchased, it's called Blue Bonnet Joy. It's by Redbird Designs. I purchased this at Stitches from the Heart in San Antonio when I was there visiting family. And um, so yeah, I just think this is a super cute chart. I'm a Texas girl through and through. So the fact that it says Joy and has a blue bonnet is awesome. I happen to have in my stash when I started this a 16 count Mystic Fabrics in this color. It's a one-off color. I did a combination of the called for DMC and then I substituted in some greens for um, the two sampler flosses. I, for a small like this, I just didn't feel like pulling the um, fancy floss. Plus, I don't think I had it. So, um, this is my finish. So, as you can see, this fabric is just perfect. The red that's down here popped. The only change I made is I did not um, stitch this top corner. I just, I liked it just like this. I really didn't want the little tiny red corner up here. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited. This is one I'd love to get FFO'd. I don't know exactly what it's gonna look like. Maybe a flat ornament, maybe a little ornament pillow, maybe just a little pillow. I don't know yet what this is gonna look like. So I would love to have like a whole little section right over here with all my joys. Cause like, you know what, last week I finished the other joy on red. Apparently I stitch all the joy things on red. So anyway, finished that one and that made me really happy um it was a fun little stitch and it lived in a gallon size project bag actually it lived in one of my um christmas bags or my holiday bags where i double up my ornaments or triple up my ornaments so i did go ahead and get finished this lives in a bag i sewed up i did finish the March installment of Animal Almanac. And this is on 18 count Snert by Mystic Fabrics. And March, if you remember, is Leap the Frog. 
So I got him finished. And I just think he is so cute. And then as you recall, I'm doing these all as individuals and then I'm gonna make them into smalls and string them on a banner. Um, and then they'll have my daughter's name spelled out and zoo. So each one of them will have a different letter, but I'm not gonna do that until they're all finished with the exception of the first one, until they're all finished and then I'm gonna let her pick what order they go in. So there is Leap. Um, so I am officially caught up on this and you'll be so proud of me. I actually went and printed out the April. Color printer quality is terrible. I don't know why because it says all my inks are near full, but it's just decided to be kind of a butt still. Um, so April is this precious little bunny, Posy. Posy the bunny. And Posy's wearing like a little raincoat because it's raining and she's got her little carrot and her little carrot planter box and some cute little tulips and there's carrots down here and umbrellas. So super cute. I'm excited to get started on that at some point. Keep on top of those. One thing about it being for the Joyful Little one is she kind of keeps me on top of them. All right. The next one lives in a Garon Tolton bag. This was January's bag of the month. It's a 12 by 18 bag. They do 12 by 18s for their bag of the month and then they also when they do their sales do 12 by 13 which is my preferred size is the smaller one and this one houses my linens and threads 2020 mystery sampler so i was looking to see if i have the cover image for february because i finished february and march you've already seen february duh um i don't have the cover image but this was my color scheme um for how I laid out March. <clears throat> Let me show you my colors again. And these live in a Bags Plus Gloss Buddy. So I have um, a combo of some Weeks Dye Works and some Dental Arts. I have extras. I have extras upon extras now. More, to that, more of that to come. And I am stitching this on a piece of 32 count um, linen from Mystic Fabrics. This is a piece of her Stitch Your Own Adventure. It's very similar to Vetterish. You can still, as of today, you can still get the Stitch Your Own Adventure um, fabric. And so um, it's really pretty. I love the way this is turning out. So I cannot get this all in one. I had a really bear of a time trying to get a picture of it for Instagram. But as you can see, this was January, February, and there is March, and I love how March turned out. And I, I, mean, I thought I was gonna um, iron it, and I didn't, so I apologize. But I love the motifs this month. Um, so as you can see, I try to use each color relatively even. If I go heavy-handed on a color, like this month, I did a lot in um, paint the pink azalea. So next month, I'm trying not to do as much in pink azalea to kind of give everybody equal opportunity. So let me show you because they released, I'm gonna enable, they released April, and each month has had between, I think three and four motifs, some smaller ones, some bigger ones. Um, April, boom. This is what we've stitched so far, this is April. So I, what I do is I take, I print it off, and I color it. So this is, I'm so pumped. Like, I am so excited. This is what my April will look like. Unless I decide to change anything up. So I really did it, I tried to do it looking like a vase of flowers. So I'm using my Cadet and my Tropical Ocean and all of what I consider the greenery. And then I've got the three pinks in all of the flowers with the darkest, which is Strawberry Fields, Weeks Dye Works, towards the center. And then moving out, you've got the pink azalea and the, um, which is not super prominent. And then your Victorian pink. And then on these smaller motifs, like right here, the inside of these petals is going to be the Victorian pink and the out and the stitch on the outside will be pink azalea. And then the X motif, this part will be the strawberry fields. So I'm really excited about April. Um, it's going to be a bear. They've been a bear each month just because there's a, lo there's a lot of stitches. It's deceptive, but it's such a fun stitch. I love pulling it out every month. 
Um, I would love to say I have grand plans to do. I love the other one of theirs. They are free, by the way. They're free. Oh, and I, disclaimer, I link everything below. It's not usually until tomorrow morning because I sit down tomorrow morning with my cup of coffee and I put in all my, all my notes in the description box. Um, so don't expect it to be tonight, but it will be tomorrow. Anywho, what I was saying, um, Linens and Threads puts out a mystery sampler. I think this is their fourth year. I think 17. No, it might have even been more than that. I think 17, 2017 was their first one. And that's, I think, my other favorite, which is the um, band sampler, vertical band sampler. I love that one. And I would love to stitch that one. But it is massive. They're all massive. I mean, the amount of work that is in this chart and charting this, having charted things that I've hand-drawn myself, I know what it goes into chart something that's small like that. I mean, these are massive. Massive. True talent. And the fact that they offer them for free. And then people get on the groups and gripe and complain that, like, there's a mess up in the chart. Are you serious? First, that's first world problems. First, first, first world problems. You can't win for trying. That's what my grandmother used to say. You can't win for trying. So those were my finishes. So I feel pretty proud that like I'm staying on top of my monthlies. So going into April, I have my April square dance, which I actually need to figure out what my colors are going to be. Um, because I'm really toning down the quantity of colors. Hmm. I've got the linens and threads and the animal almanac, and I'd like to continue to stay on top of those. All right. So starts and restarts. So let me, um, actually I've kind of got the starts and restarts all mixed in with whips. So I'm just going to show you what I worked on this week. How about that? I, and I'll tell you if it was a start in case you're a newbie. And if you are new here, side note, if you are new here, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I hope you like what you see, like what you hear, um, and choose to stick around more. I tend to film hour long videos. I tend to get chatty. It is what it is. It's not for everyone. I know that. And, um, but when I film my shorter, <laughs> the shorter video, I had people like, huh, I did my long video. I totally get it. I love being able to put on like a hour long video and just stitch and listen and look up periodically and see. Um, so yeah, I'm going to probably continue on because, you know, we're, we're trucking along here. So I did get some time in my blue flower quilting bee. I love absolutely everything that Janine designs. Everything. I can't stitch everything. I do have one previous finish. I think next week I may pull out some of my previous finishes, especially those that I finished before I started filming Flosstube. I may pull in some previous finishes and do a fun, like do a segment on that. Cause hopefully stash will not be near the nonsense that it is this week. Um, so I finished one. This one I'm hoping to get finished here pretty quick. It's birthday is approaching on the 15th. So I would love to get this one finished. I don't have a ton left. I'll show it here in just a minute. And then I've started Huckleberry Farm and Winter Valentine. Um, however, I have, I have some other ones too. Well, I mean, I have the, um, Bendy Stitchy Designs and the, um, Blue Flower Combo, like, combo? No. Collaboration piece. Um, Anywho, this lives in a pouch that I sewed up, a project sleeve. Um, I've had lots of people ask me if I'll do a tutorial. There are great tutorials out there on YouTube. This is a book sleeve, is basically. And um, there's one that I really like that's very similar to how I do it. Um, the only difference being she uses spray adhesive. And I was able to acquire one-sided fusible foam instead of spraying the foam. Anywho, I will link that below the, the tutorial uh, video that I like for these book sleeves. Um, so anyway, and I also like my envelope closure, but those are just, I just kind of figured it out. And the reason why I do not film a tutorial is I do not have proper camera setup. In order to film the overhead planner shot, I had a very wonky setup I've looked at like, truly, I don't know what kind of gear I might need to do overhead shots. 
Anywho, pouch of mine. Bags Plus, Bendy Flip Floss Buddy, 16 Count Heartland by Picture This Plus. And if you follow me on Instagram, you will see that I stitched on this on my back porch one morning this week. And it was awesome. I love this color fabric. In fact, I've just bought some more from 123 Stitch for something. Um, so I put in a little over 400 stitches into this. And so um, I completed about half of each of these motifs. Maybe that one's even more than half. And then I came up here. I had a little bit to put in this one. This one was complete. Some here and some here. So I kind of just moved around the different motifs and added in um, bits and bobs of different colors. I'm trying to kind of keep, if I pick a color, I get into a good area of that color and then I move to another color. And when I get in my chart, I highlight with different colors. So it's just a gorgeous pattern. And I have Sleeping Bee um, in the wings waiting for this one to be done to start that one. So anyway, I put um, some time into that for Daily 30. I'm a Daily 30 prompt. All right, so then, oh, okay. This is Gobble Gob. It lives in a, it is Kismet Stitches small pouch. Love this size pouch. This is great for like the little half, the Plum Street. This is just a printed copy of the Plum Street, but it'll fit the printed, uh, it'll fit the half sheet. I guess that's what you call it, like the half folded. Um, like a lot of heartstrings, Plum Street, a lot of them. So maybe this is Gobble Gob. It's one of her stacks. And I actually restarted this this week. And I restarted this on 25 count potato. It's Lugana. Um, <coughs> pardon me. And I'm stitching this one over one. I'm going to do all of my stacks of one over one. Because I've lost my mind. And I love the little tiny stitches. So I have the beginnings of a super tiny turkey. And he's all killed. So, some of the one, some of the 25 is a little bit um, thicker, and the holes are a little closer together. This is one of those. But even still, I just, uh So, this week was the week of the one over one. Now, granted, I did not put any time into sampler lesson. However, I had two restarts on the 25 count, and I had a new start on 25 count. Stitch all the things. Stitch all the tiniest things. Um, so yeah, I love, I just love the little, it's, I don't know. And I'm excited because I figured out that I don't mind from a different one. I'm going to show you here in a minute. I don't mind one strand on 18 count. Mm. All right. This is a made by mama Joan bag. This one holds another restart. And this is the rack stack by Plum Street. And I restarted, if you can get a pattern here. Sorry, it's really crinkly. Get in there. Get in the bag. I restarted this one on 25 count. And this is, let me tell you the exact color. I have it on a piece of paper, I think. Water Sapphire. Water Sapphire Lugana. And I have the beginnings of the tiniest little middle reindeer. Some little reindeer legs in that stack. Yep. Loving it. So I know for a fact I'm going to do these two one over one on the 25. I have plans to do my other two hen pack and sheep heap also, but I'm not starting those anytime soon. So I may change my mind between now and then because that happens. All right. So for daily 30, I pulled out this lives in a Garon Totem bag. So this is my red truck Christmas tree bag which if you are familiar with my channel you will know this holds my prairie schoolers christmas tree farm mine looks nothing like this and this is on what is it even in here i have so many floss floss buddy oh there they are floss buddy bags floss floss buddy or that no floss away not floss buddy anyway this is on 18 count Ice Princess from Under the Sea Fabrics. Hang on. Alrighty, so where I think we left off was I was sharing that this is a piece of 18 count. Under the Sea Fabrics 
an ice princess um, antique out Ada and this is where I am on it so I've hit one two three of the edges um, there is a border that goes all the way around um, so this week on my task I did finished out this tree because I had already kind of started it did this tree this tree this little bit of a tree this is on top of a really cute little car and then this tree so it was somewhere around 400 ish stitches so I'm nearly done with the this forest part um, there's this one more tree and then I think the car I think that's it for for down here there's a bit more in the way of trees here um, Santa is running this way pulling a sled over here and then there's a bit more in the way of tree uh, tree and houses up here there's dotted stars throughout the sky the moon in the sky and then the border so I'm not super worried about getting this finished before its birthday because I love pulling this one out and working on it um, this one's birthday is in June so I think I can for sure get it finished and I've had a lot of people ask if I would be willing to share my conversion. I wish I could. Um, a lot of the flosses I'm using are Victoria Mottos from the club. And if they're club, they're kind of a one-time deal. Um, a, some of them are Ships Manor like grab bag flosses that I don't have a name for. There's also some in there that are um, Color and Cotton Mystery Grab Bag. And so I don't have names for those. Because a lot of the grab bag ones that you get from companies, they're not named because they're slightly off from a die um, from one of their standard colors. So needless to say, I would love to be able to share it, but you would literally have to have random months of Victoria Motto, random grab bags that maybe you got at the same time I did. Um, so yeah. But I will post a finished picture. My, I, the idea from this actually stemmed from Eric at Ships Manor posted on his Instagram back a while ago that he had used his orphan floss. So he had just gone through and like if he had a couple of strands left of a color, he used that in his. And so it was this really wonky. I actually sat down because I can't think like that. I need it more structured. And I created a conversion. Um... And picked five tree colors and picked the colors for the houses and picked what the red was going to be and things like that. Um, so, yeah. And I think I'm recording. Yes, I am. I was thinking, did I really just sit here for, you know, umpteen minutes and not turn the record button back on? Could have actually happened. Wouldn't have been that crazy. All right. So, the next thing that I worked on for Daily 30 prompt. Um, this lives in my princess, my princess castle bag. Um, that I sewed up and it has a big floss buddy this one I think is a fifty pocket fifty pocket and this has like a pr printed panel on the back it's a hedgehog actually and this actually has so much 3808 that um, I have three of them I'm about to run out of my first one um, I had three kitted here, four kitted here, because there's one up here. One, two, three, four, and that means there's eight back here. It has 12 skeins. 12 skeins of 3808. And I have another one of these I'm kidding up also that has 10 to 12 skeins of that. Because this designer loves using it for all the outlining. And this is my Dona Stitch. This is Sleeping Beauty. And I am doing some converting on this, but you won't see any of that in today's video because I'm still up here like outlining in the uh, 3808. But I will be converting Prince Philip's hair. Each of the fairies will be their color from the Disney movie. So I'm excited because I got all of the, the 3808 on this page. This page. It's like 12 pages. No, it's like 16 pages. I think it's like 16 pages. It's not huge. It's 224 by 252. It's pretty big. Um, so I did all of the 3808 on this page. And it's one of the center pages. It's the center top page of the page. 
So I had said that when I, I would reward myself when I finished one page of the outlining by filling it in. But now I think I have decided that I want to do um, maybe one more page over here and then fill it in. I don't know yet. I haven't decided. It's not going to happen anytime soon. It might. I really enjoyed stitching on this. I like doing just the 3808 because it literally is like, because it's DMC, I can go in and put all the tent stitches in and then I can go back and fill them in. So what's nice is while in the evening or in the evenings when I have my free stitching time, I can take the time to put in all of the, put in all the tent stitching and then set it to the side. And then the next day, while little one is doing Legos or whatever, I can pull it out and put mind mindlessly cross the X's the other way and not have to worry about counting or anything like that. Okay, so then we're going to get into the whips that were also new starts. So um, this one lives in a so much to love big bottom bag. This was one I got off of Stash and Load a while ago and it was a steal. I think it was half price. Somebody had obviously washed it because the poor little heart is like all shrunken and crumpled. That's okay. This houses, okay, so one of my viewers, Miss Kathy, reached out to me on Instagram and said, have you seen the Jesus Wept sampler? And I was like, what? No, what, huh? <laughs> and so she pointed me towards Sassy Jacks. Sassy Jacks has released a sampler called Elizabeth Cooper under their sassafras samplers um brand designing brand that is based off of a um it's a reproduction sampler and they were originally going to release this on easter it's really kind of a unique sampler i'll get to that in a minute but they decided that due to what you know find everybody finding peace in their stitching they released it for free for free this is a pretty large sampler. It is unique because there's two chartings. The first charting has the border done in two over two and all of the most all of the interior done in one over one. The second option is the entire chart is in two over two. So if you do the entire chart in two over two, you're ending up with a 190 by 311 sampler. If you are do the over two border and the one over one, it's 106 by 171. So I ended up going ahead and downloading this. Did not know I would start it as soon as I did, but then I realized I need to start this. It's beautiful. I will say the conversion from, so my printer did a terrible job again. It's a jerk, but it's a beautiful sampler. It's got this really unique house in the middle, um, and it says Jesus wept. Um, and... I am going to do the one that has two over two and one over one. The called for colors are a lot of greens, creams, golds, and browns. That's just not my jam. So I am doing a color conversion. I'm doing my own thing. Who didn't know that? So firstly, let me show you. I, oh, I have a very small pitiful start on the border. I um, But I just started this like an hour before I decided to start filming. Because so I was like, I want to start it right now. 28 count Mystic Fabrics Stitch Your Own Adventure, SYOA. So if you go on her website and you look for SYOA, that's Stitch Your Own Adventure. Um, so again, it's that real parchment-y. And I have the measly little start on the border. Up here, this is the top border. I started top left. And here is my, so you saw what the colors were. This is my palette. So I do still have some greens, but I ramped them up a little bit. I do still have some browns. For some of the creamy ones, like I pulled in this one that's a light pink. I pulled in this one that's like a brown with a purple undertone. This one's another one that's a brown with a slightly deeper tone. I pulled in this one. This is one of the borders, and it's Victorian Motto um, Antique Pumpkin Glow. So it's more orange than what's called for. I'm so excited about my palette. So excited. So, yeah. Why is that blowing that all out? Oy vey. Let me put something behind it. There we go. It's like 
like juggling. Filming a frosty is like juggling. So anywho, I ended up making my own little stitchy card because I realized I didn't want, I'm, I'm kind of getting to the point where my bags, especially if I have pulled Victorian mottos and they're 20 yards a piece, they get beefy. So I've started making um, floss cards. And so what I did is I had, these are like the little $9 pack of cards you can get at Michael's, the fold over ones. I've had these, they're Christmas themed, but I thought that was really pretty and it kind of goes along with the, the vibe of the chart. Um, and then I just alternatingly punched. I didn't do a great job. This was my first one. And then I punched before I laminated. That was something I learned because when I went back to try to punch one that it's a little bit trickier when it's already been laminated. It's requires more hand strength. So as you can see, this one's like off the side. Um, and then I actually put with Sharpie the symbol. So I don't have to go and necessarily look at my color card to see what I have. So that is my little floss card. And I liked the double stacked way that that So Kelly Co has hers. Um, so I um, did that instead of having it on both sides. This bag houses two new stars. And this is a Garon Tote bag. This was my March bag of the month. I didn't know what was going to go in it. It's iridescent. It's like really cool. Um, and then I realized I want it to house my Be Well and Stitch. Or stitch and be well. Be well and stitch. Be stitching well. Be stitching well. Be stitching well. Every day. We be stitching well. That's not the way it goes. I needed that. Alright, so. I started. This is a chart by Barbara Anna. She has two free ones out right now. And this is one that I am stitching along with um, Michelle. Garrett, Bendy Stitchy, and um, I think it's Christine of Delicious Threads, and they have hashtagged it, Box in a Dress Sal. She's amazing. It's called The Light, and I just, when I saw this, I was like, I love that she's this just large, like when you look at it, you're like, oh, it's a great big fox holding a lantern, but then when you look closer, there's this teeny tiny precious village that she's shining the light on, and I love that. So, I got this one started. She has the other one, which is the key, which is that like majestic funky swan with like the flower crown. Um, that one will get started too at some point, but I definitely did, did get a start on this one. This is 25. I'm stitching it in mostly the called for. There's a little bit of conversion that happened because I didn't necessarily have the DMC and um, I'd already placed too many orders with one, two, three stitch. So yeah. I am stitching this on the 25 count Lugana. This one is, now I knew I was going to forget this, Stormy Night. So I got a fair bit of a start. I started, this is a center start, and this is like her really cool little fur shawl kind of thing. And then I went ahead and outlined the head. The head is in Heirloom Pumpkins by uh, Victoria Motto. And then I realized that she kind of looked creepy. And so I went ahead and stitched in the 3865 right there and at the, her ear. So there's another color that comes in back here and creates like these little, like the fluffiness of the back of her head. So yeah, I love it. I love it. Barbara Anna is a genius. Um, I love absolutely everything that she designs. And she has... An insanely beautiful one more. I don't know if there's only one more, but you know, I have um, the Miss Scissors and the Miss Teapot, and there's one that she sneaked that Nitka Moscow has sneaked that looks coffee themed. Like I've seen little coffee beans and stuff. Why well, am already on the message me or like email me when it's available? All right, I felt so blessed that like a large number of people. Um, contacted me Instagram Instagram to my email to my Gmail those of you that maybe are friends with me on Facebook which I don't post cross stitch stuff on my Facebook I really don't post much at all um, I have it more so I can post a few pictures of my kid every now and again but I've even had a few of you that follow me there 
messaged me and say, have you seen this? You have to stitch this. And I was like, yes, I've seen it. It's already kitted and we'll get started. Well, it got started. And so this is the Blue Flowers um, Be Well and Stitch piece, which is Let Joy Be Unconfined. You know me. I love anything that says joy. It's my thing. So I got this started today. This is the piece that I start. Ooh, good gravy. Sorry, that was really close. This is the piece that I decided to go ahead and try uh, one thread on 18 count. I, I don't know why I haven't been doing it all along, except that I do like um, 18 count with two strands. But I did it today because I was like, you know what? If Beth Twist can stitch a 28, two over two, or one over two, I can probably do an 18 count with one strand. Um, so I, this is charted in all dinky dies. So I have a combo of, I actually had two of the dinky dies from a grab bag from a while ago. I have a Victorian motto in there or two. I've got some DMC and I've got, I think that might be it. Yeah. So a little random assortment. And this is a one-off die for Mystic Fabrics and an 18 count Ada. So I have B, B, be happy, be well, be joyful, be anything you want to be right now because we have to just get by. So B, B, that'd be cool if that was my screen grab. I never get that as my screen grab. I swear the longer I do this, the worse the screen grabs, screen grabs get. So that's all the things that I have worked on this week. That was quite a bit, actually. All right, so what's next on the agenda? Plans. Plans. So I like to tell you about my plans. So one cool thing, tomorrow. So tonight was when I was supposed to be going over to Grapevine for the Stitching Texas Retreat, checking into the hotel, having a nice, relaxing, calm, whatever, I'm meeting up with some folks for dinner and a little bit of like impromptu stitching in the lobby. And then tomorrow was the Stitching Texas Retreat and then it went part of the day on Sunday. It's actually supposed to be part of a little YouTube panel. Like very excited about it. But I already kind of knew once things started to extend out, extend out, extend out that it was going to likely get canceled and or postponed. It has been postponed to the 1st of June, a uh, first bit of June. But Tina, who's such a sweet, sweet, sweet friend, she said, that's not good enough. We have to do something. So she reached out and said, hey, anybody want to film like a Facebook Live tomorrow at some point? Like juggly. <laughs> she threw out like all kinds of things. And I was like, I'll do one. So I was thinking about, okay, what could I do? Because I don't want to do just like a regular floss tube video because I have about an hour time slot. And I don't want to get the hook. I don't remember what show that was, but they used to, and they pull you off the stage. I don't want to get kicked off Facebook Live. So I thought, I absolutely am obsessed with, uh, well, I was obsessed with Sharon McKinney's stash dives. I could have watched a thousand of those videos. And now some other folks are doing them. She just has a soothing voice. So soothing voice. And her puppies are so cute. Anyway, tangent. I um, thought I might do a stash dive to think about mania. Because I'm trying to figure out what I want to do about Mania. I have a ton of things I've kitted. Like, when I haven't been stitching, I've been kidding. Or looking at fabric. Or organizing flosses. Or, like, whatever. Making notes about things. So I have so many fun projects that I could start. But a lot of them are huge. And I feel like I need to get some things off my whip list before I start anything else huge. And, like, I'm waiting on my fabric for Consider the Lilies. And I had consider, considered starting Consider the Lilies in May. So that's a possibility, but that is, that's gargantuan. That's a gap. Our ga gar gargantuan project. Mm -hmm. New category, gar a gap, a gargantuan ass project. <clears throat> and I've got Berry Bowl. Oh, well, I, I know I have the Berry Bowl Sal starting with Blue Bonnets and Whiskey and, um, McMama Hollis. Sorry, I had to think a minute. That starts May 1st. So, I thought that might be kind of cool. And if I do that, I'm going to have to talk to Tina to see if, like, she wants to copyright my material tomorrow. 
but I'm thinking I would record the Facebook Live and upload it here so you could see my live stash dive. I think it'll work like that. I think I can figure that out. Anywho, so I, I'm going to do that at some point. I think I'm going to do that tomorrow for my video. We'll see. Spoiler. I have an Easter week start, so I'm either going to start Sunday or Monday, um, the Mirabilia Gathering Eggs. I didn't bring it over here, but I've shown it in some of my other videos. You'll see it next week. It's a unique, I think it's a different style of Mirabilia, and it's one that I really like, and it's more looks like vintage. Um, I love the fancy ladies. I think they're phenomenal. I think the mermaids are beautiful. They're just not all my style. So when I saw this, I was like, it went to the top of my wish list, so I'm excited to start that. Next week is my mom's birthday, and I have, last year I started giving her two of the Noah's Christmas Ark ornaments, so um, I need to get the two started for this year, so I figured I'd start those on her birthday, and it's going to be giraffes and doves, so it's the second from the first chart, because I gave her the welcome mat this year, and, which is a freebie, and the crocodiles, or alligators, and this time I'm going to give her giraffes which is the second chart second second animal of the first chart and then doves which is one of the animals now if I get really like gung-ho because I didn't start those until like October and I finished them easily I'm also switching over to 18 count Ada I had done the first two on 36 count R&R &R, and I just really did not enjoy how loosey goosey it was but I de-stashed it and some other folks are going to be super happy with it. It was Star's Hollow Blend. <clears throat> anyway, and Doves which is the other one. And if I can get those two I might bump up a third so then I'm into two every chart and if I do that then the second one in this chart two is Honeybees. I don't, like I said, I don't know what mania is going to look like yet. And I am going to continue to work through some daily 30 um, prompts. I am part of Cross Stitcher's Journal and Daily 30. I am content contemplating trying to jazz things up this month and doing some more enchanted stitching challenges. I stepped back last month um, this is Pirates of the Caribbean. I don't have enough sea themed things or boats. And I didn't know if it would totally go that direction. But it could have. And it would have made me feel like I'm a completionist. So if I go in, I'm going all in. So that's why I'm kind of like, eh. But it's Cars. And I love the movie Cars. So maybe. Kachiga. Kachiga. Kachia. Anyway. Starting to get loopy. I'm going to tell you. Sleeping. That's a tough thing to come by in this house. Well, for me. All right. Let's talk a little stash. So first things first. First things first. There's some sales going on. I think one of them ends today. And that's the Hade sale. So I did indulge myself in some Hades. Even though I have like literally 200 stitches in my one Hade. And two other charts I've got. Um, but I did indulge in some. I'll show them in just a minute. I also have been getting um, email alerts that my bobbin... Um, which I know Jan Hicks talks about, Stitch and Mommy has talked about, I want to say Michelle has talked about, anyway, they're doing like digital sales, so if you're on their email list, you get an alert as to which artists' uh, digital charts are on sale, like the ones today were 40% off, they've had 30% off and 20% off, been some really, like if you like that kind of Russian, Eastern European design there's some been some really beautiful ones so get on their email list because you can't you can't pass up how inexpensive some of these beautiful charts are and as I'm sharing I will tell you that I have an embarrassing number of orders from threads entwined um, she's given me a code to share with you it will be in the description box below it's good from now uh, it's been good because I clearly bought three orders and used my own code is that tacky? I kind of thought maybe it was kind of tacky to use my own code. And I think I had a customer reach, or not a customer, one of her customers, who is one of my viewers, reach out and say they've ordered like twice using my code. So anyway, Joy15. It'll get you 15% off your order between now and the end of May. And 
she's got some cool stuff in her shop. And I know she's working on maybe getting some more of her, because she kept color and cotton fabric in stock. Now, granted, I've got too much color and cotton fabric on its way to me. Why does my nose get yuckily when I start floss tubing? I know a lot of people get itchy nose. Mine starts to get all like congested. So I'm sorry if I'm sniffing. Okay, so let's just, let's talk about the digital patterns I bought this week. So the first one is actually already living in a project bag. And yes, you may, if you've watched, would say, wait a minute, this had Emerald City Sal in it. Emerald City Sal is officially off the table. The silks are going to a different project. I'm not telling you what it is yet because it's an idea I have. So in this bag though is a Wizard of Oz chart. And I tried to see if I could chart it, convert it with the Mrs. Sados. But the Mrs. Sados are bright and vibrant. And I the thing that drew me to this pattern is the more primitive and rustic nature. So this is from a shop on Etsy called The Little Stitcher. Laura Ramola is the um, pattern author. And she has a lot of cute, she has a Sleeping Beauty and a Cinderella and like Anna Green Gables, like awesome. But I love her Wizard of Oz chart. So I purchased this and I did go ahead and get the DMC. My Michaels is still doing curbside. So I ordered online and picked it up curbside. Um, so I just thought this was cute. Like some people might think it's creepy that like the lion's the only one with eyes, but like, that's okay. Montessori dolls don't have eyes. And not expressions either. Or not all Montessori, but like some Montessori. So anyway, that's already in a project bag. I don't know when it's going to get started, but... All right, so then in this bag houses some other randomness. So Cherry Hill Stitchery a couple of weeks ago was having a sale on their charts. And so I picked up two because I'm in a sheet phase. Anyway, and I saw somebody stitching the second one. I don't remember who it was. And I was like, where did that come from? So the first one is Bloom. And I think that little sheep is so cute with the flowers and the little lacy detail. It's so cute. And again, my picture, my printer did not do this justice. And I love this one. This is Spring Barnyard Stack. So I don't know if this is going to be a series, but I sure would hope it would be. Because I think it'd be cute. You've got a chicken. A cute dairy cow. I think it's a dairy cow. A heifer. Um, and a sheep. And a butterfly. And some flowers. And some grass. So cute. I have nothing kitted for this. Like I have no, nothing. But I probably, it calls for... Some weeks and some DMC. And I might already have some of them. The other one calls for DMC Classic Color Works. Yeah. I don't know. I may pull stuff from like what, what I have on hand. Also a couple weeks back I bought some things from Modern Folk Embroidery. So the first one I bought, and I thought this was really cool, is they have a whole set of decorative border patterns. So I'm gonna be combining these into kind of my own band sampler at some point. I then also purchased, while I was buying, figured I'd buy this too. This is a Gloria, a Christmas star. And I love this and I am gonna do it in a, in a dark red. I don't know which dark red yet. Actually, yes I do. I think I'm gonna do it because I bought it. The um, Color and Cotton Carmine. So we'll see. And then the last one that I got from Modern Folk, this one is a potential May start. I probably shouldn't show it, but I'm going to anyway. I'm sorry, this is really crinkly. I love this one. This is Spring Dance. And um, they're like little girls doing like a Maypole kind of a thing. Now, when I stitch it though, I'm going to leave the outer flat. These flowers is going to be the outer border. And I did that one because... Um, the piece of fabric I wanted to use is not wide enough to do all of this big chunky border. Plus, I really like how taking that off makes it just slightly more delicate looking. I think the design is gorgeous and the work that went into it, but I'm going to cut that off. And I'm going to use a piece of Be Stitch Me 18 count in Mummy. And this is going to be in my... PR052, I think is what this was, um, from Silks For You. And I did go ahead and cut them and braid them. For now, I may, car I may put them on card thread drops. We'll see. But it's this really pretty blue. 
So I'm excited about that. Whenever. I'm excited about that whenever. So anyway, those were some. Oh, wait, there's more in here. I forgot. So hate sale. What I buy at the hate sale. So if you did not know, um, Heaven and Earth Designs hate is having a 50% off sale. I believe it ends today. So sorry for the late notice. It's been up for a few days. But 50% off their charts and things. So I jumped on the bandwagon with Aaron G. Martini Stitcher, Jan Hicks. But I'm not doing the huge max color, full size, super size. But I'm going to do the mini Farewell to Anger by Leonid Afrimov. I probably butchered that and I apologize. So this one ends up being 341 by 225. And I'm going to do this on 25 count. Um, but I'm trying to decide if I'm going to do um, full cross or tent. I think it's one over one full cross or is it two over one tent somebody comment below that does a lot of full coverage i will likely take and swatch and figure out what works best for me but i did go ahead and get two pieces of the 25 count easy get it 25 easy or whatever lugana for this one my other one my tranquil tulips is on 18 and it is stiff as a board i picked up this is um story keep ice princess by hannah lynn and I am actually going to crop it to about here. Um, and I just love, I love that. My daughter's obsessed with Elsa. Now granted, by the time I finish this, she will care nothing about Elsa. Okay, I'm excited about this one. Um, this is by um, Meredith Dillman. And this is Quick Stitch Alice with Pocket Watch. And I am actually going to stitch this on a piece of light blue fabric. So it will just be her. Um... So basically, I will not be doing any of the background. I'm going to stitch her on probably something similar to Ice Princess. So like a mottled blue and white. I think. We'll see. And then the last one. I couldn't resist this. This one's actually fairly small in the general scheme of um, Heaven and Earth Designs. This one's only 150 by 144. And this is by Judy Mastrangelo. And this is Quick Stitch Bunny Tail. I think it's so cute. So as you can see, I go for kind of some of the cutesier ones. I'm excited about it. So yeah, that's all the virtual charts I got. So now, I guess I should have done my intro, but I didn't. So here's the thing. My bucket's a little far away. Oh, I don't want to kick the tripod. But I'm like, so I apologize in advance. And I just realized, once again, I put everything in backwards. So here we go. It's joy-filled, stashy stash time. If I could weigh this right now, I would tell you it weighs like a lot of a lot of weight. <laughs> it's a lot of weight. So, and you know what? I'm gonna put it over here because it's too heavy. All right. So I did go into last. Whoops, I got something, and these are crinkly, and I apologize. I went on and noticed that Garon had Garon had some grime guards left from their release the previous Saturday and I knew I needed one for gathering eggs so I went ahead and picked up an 11 by 11 that matches the bag that I'm using for that. I will put that though on an 8 by 11 Q-snap. And then the one, I wanted one for Huckleberry Farm and the bag I got is the turquoise version of this fabric but I think I have it with an 11 by 11. Actually you know what I lied. I think I have a 6 by 8 mare so I got the 8 by 8 of this one. And then I just went ahead and grabbed because I love this print the cone flowers. I grabbed another 8 by 8 and an 11 by 11 just to have their grime guards are the best. They're deep. They're wide so they hold a ton. Alright where do we go next? Um Okay, spoiler, if you get Mystic Fabrics, Fabric of the Month, I get the 18 count in a 21 by 24, and this is in the colorway Adobe. It's a really pretty course. My camera is going to try to blow it all out. There we go. So really pretty. Boom. So I'm continuing to add. I like that she's doing a lot of single colors this year. Um, because I have found that it's harder for me to personally find projects for her more jazzy things. But that's just me. Um, so I did go ahead and purchase. I have seen this fabric from a bunch of different bag 
people. And Sue, you are absolutely right. I don't know why I buy project bags, except that I love all the project bags. Sue commented on my last video, why do you buy bags? You make beautiful bags. I know I make beautiful bags, but I'd rather be buying bags and stitching instead of sewing. I thought about this. So anyway, So Much to Love posted a bag with this fabric. It was um, their bag of the month, I think, for February, and she had some left over maybe, but she didn't have them all with the extra goodies. She had just the bag by themselves. So it's the cute little heart barn with the flowers. And then she's got the polka dots, the rickrack, the heart, the little felt heart. The back is the, like, plank with the roses. And then inside is the cute with the heart. So cute. So do I know what's going in that? Not yet. Actually, I think I might, but I can't really remember because I think I bought it with a purpose. Okay, so I did get the remainder of my flosses for Berry Bowl Sal. And then I, um, which I got from Threads and Twined. Don't forget your code. So I got a bunch of, now granted, I pulled some of the ones that I wanted to use, which were DMC and Victorian Motto. And then I pulled, and then I bought the Weeks at that luscious luscious in the heck oh it's a dmc skating thing so beautiful so this is the chart in question i had talked about using the 25 count one over one in potato and pewter but then i realized i don't know if that will work because this is all um either one over two or two over two depending on your count and this right here is one over one so if I was already stitching one over one, how does that work with this middle part? No idea. Somebody also approached me and said, just a suggestion, piece your pieces first before you start stitching. So I've got to investigate that. Then I was looking and my fabric of the month, I actually am almost done. I purchased a six month prepay back in like November or December for 36 count. And that's getting close to being done. I'll show you my 18 count in a minute. But it came in. This was the one that came this month. It's called Love Letter. And then I went through my drawer and I was like, okay, well, I could use that. That's really pretty. It's part of the neutral colorway. Um, and this was one from a previous month called Shiplap. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, that could be gorgeous. But do I want to stitch it on 30, 36 count with that one over one? So am I insane to stitch it on 36 count with the one over one? Hmm? Although I'm doing Autumn Drum and it's got one over one on 40. So um, the one nice thing is, is color and cotton is not super tight. Not like Pictures Plus. So I am thinking, I am contemplating that that's going to be what I choose. However, I might also have 18 count. No, I might also have 32 count Luganus coming from one, two, three stitch and two colors of Pictures Plus. It's not the two called for, but it's close. So we'll see. All right, what's next? Let's speed this up. Okay, so I got my bag of the month for, from Garon Tote Bags. It's a 12 by 13, and it has precious bunnies. Bunnies, so cute. And then the inside is a fun rainbow plaid. And I got a mini bag. The same. And my child's already tried to steal it. Um, interesting story behind the mini bag. Um, I did not win a giveaway because I don't win anything ever. And in fact, a lot of you were so sweet and reached out and said that my name had been called on Priscilla and Chelsea Stitching with the Housewives video last Saturday for winning a chart. And I was like, but I don't think I commented on the week before to win a chart because I'm so far behind on floss tube. And I was like, did I? And I went and I watched it like twice and it's somebody else that their name, they don't have a channel, but their like subscriber name is Joyful Stitching. Joy filled stitcher, joy full stitching. Anyway, I don't win anything. The bottom line is I didn't win this, but when they they sent out an email and said, "Hey folks, um, with the trying times, if you need to take a break from your back of the month, you totally can." Well, I wrote them back and said, "I'm perfectly fine. In fact, let me know if I need to pick up somebody else's because I would hate for somebody to not get their bag if it brings them joy. We're totally in a place we can do that." And um, Ronnie, or Gary, I'm not sure, because it comes through as Gary's Facebook, but it might have been Ronnie, I'm not sure, um, reached out and said, hey, there's a little something extra for your generosity. So that was not necessary, and that was obviously not why I did it. 
but they are just the two of the most precious people two of the most precious people and I love their bags so um, if you don't know about them I'm not telling you where to go find them <laughs> they're posting bags tomorrow I don't need any but they said they're gonna have dragons I don't even like dragons but I'm like a dragon bag I don't even like dragons why do I need a dragon bag oh because it's a Garon Tom bags and I need all the bags no I'm gonna have to abstain considering I have two more bags to show I have a problem I have a big problem and it's called project bags I've always been a bag lady always been a bag lady my mother will tell you I've always been a bag lady all right so I did get two other orders from threads and twine um and they cut the cutest packaging right both of mine are flosses so I got these are I have to remember what they're for so some of these are um duplicates yeah Duplicates of my linens and thread flosses, like all of these. And maybe these two. I don't know. Anyway. And then I've got some of these are for... What are these for? Sheep heap. Some of these are for sheep heap. So some are for... I'm swapping out some of the colors. So again, some are for sheep heap, some are for linens and threads. So, got all those. She sends them on a floss ring. Like, that's really cool. That's an extra little touch. Woo. I love her. She's amazing. Go shop. Go buy things. Go buy things. It comes quick. I mean, she's super fast. Okay, and then these, I got two Adobes because one is for something else. I think it's for token of friendship and sewn in friendship or something. This is an insane amount of weeks dye works, but this is for Rosewood Manor's parchment tapestry. I decided to do it as called for because it's gorgeous. It is a gorgeous dress. These are gorgeous flosses. Mm. Calls for four skeins. Yes, four skeins. And she had five. I could have bought one more. A bullfrog. That's all the outsides. I've shown it on a previous video. Uh, it's so pretty. Like, look how pretty. Karen is such a genius. And I'm trying to decide if I'm going to do Summer Quakers because it's my favorite. And I've held off this whole time, but I'm trying to decide if I'm going to do it. And then I'm trying to decide if I'm going to order it from the people who say they're like, they have it ready to ship, but like it takes forever to get things because they're offering a discount. So is the discount worth the headache? I don't know. But I did go ahead and pre-order the bag. Garon had his bag pre-orders. Okay, so then Misty posted some extra charts she had. Oh, I need to stop touching my nose, but it's so itchy. And she had this one, and I've admired this one for a while, and I probably will stitch it with this phrase, but I think I had actually a while back bought the other phrases maybe from Beth. I can't remember. But this is the one, the Choose Your Own Motto sampler. I think Country Stitchers are, is doing this. Country Stitchers are doing this. But I love the saying that it's all I'm saying is you've never seen me crying and eating tacos at the same time. So it's like this really prim, bright, fun, old-timey border. And then it talks about tacos because it's all about the tacos. All right. So on Stash and Load, I might have bought two more bags. These people make these bags, and they're beautiful. First lady back. Oh, it's so pretty. So pretty. A lot of these people use the French general fabric. I don't know. This one is a vinyl front. It's not my favorite. Vinyl front is not my jam, but I'll I'll use them if they're beautiful. It's really well made. It's really nice, thick vinyl. Pretty floral inside. Just a little simple zipper. It's got a little bit of a crease because it was sent shipped flat, but that's okay. Um, I don't expect them to ship them flat. And then I saw this one, and then after I got it, I might have gone back and claimed another one. Since so I got on stash and load shut the front door shut, shut the quilted tiny square project bag front door so I the other one I'm getting is French General I'm so excited and then in addition it's really pretty it's got pretty lined matching coordinating fabric it has this vintage little tag so cute it's good housekeeping and then it comes with a really cute little lobster claw heart looks like a lock and then your little scissors so cute so yeah I think her name is Shirley something or another anyway stash unload is where I found that 
All right, so I've got some other things over here. Let's see. Thank you guys posted grab bags. This one spoke to me. It's 13 is my lucky number, and this was the most beautiful array. They're all beautiful. But the deal with their grab bags is these are when they get to, like, I guess the end of a certain amount. So these are not full skeins. They're various lengths. They're still usable lengths. Um, and they are named. But as you can see, they have the dash through them, which means they're not going to be the full quantity. But they're great for pulling into a project. And because they're named, if they are one that can be converted, you can go look at their conversion chart. So I got those. I might have gotten another set, but that's something to talk about later. Here is my um, fabric of the month for Color and Cotton 18 count, and this is Spectre. It's like a really pretty um, gray, but it's got like a per it's more purpley. So anyway, I get the fat quarter of this. Um, Okay, I placed an order with Fat Quarter because I, one, I needed a floss that I couldn't find anywhere else. And then I, there were some other things I wanted to get to. I needed um, Classic Color Works Stepping Stone. And then when I organized my craft room, I found like two skeins. So now I've got a lot of stepping stone. But look how cute that little bag they put that one piece of floss in. Um, I wanted to try um, the Lori Holt Vintage Cloth, the 25 Count Lugana. Um, this is in Oatmeal. Reminds me a little bit of Vintage Country Mocha. So I got this, and it's a fairly large piece. It's 18 by 18, which if you're working one over one, you can get like 18 projects on that. I did go ahead and pick up the Spring Tulips Floss Pack. Um, this is the floss that is used for the Spring Tulips chart that is in the Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine. That is um, Priscilla and Chelsea's chart. So I went ahead and grabbed that. I was placing an order. And what was funny is, is I had kind of loaded up my cart and then they were like, they like stepped away and was doing some other stuff. And I came back and in my junk email, it was like, come back and shop with us and here's a code to get $10 off an order. I was like, ooh, okay. So I guess I was logged in. And then I have seen... Um, Priscilla and Chelsea stitching with this and I wanted to get some. It's the 32 count Lugana in the gray check. Now the barn, the taupe or natural colored in white check is out of stock, but I have an alert to tell me. This is a big piece. This is 18 by 32. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to figure out what I want to do with that. My nest egg came. Oh my gosh, we are just going, going, going with the stash. Okay, I've got one more of these. Where is it? Here it is. So I do um, the nest egg through three owl threads. They are on Facebook. I will link below. I do every month when I get my um, flosses. I do actually three different clubs now. Um, I can't get this one open. I went ahead and added weeks last week. This is like insane because I'm sure if you've been with me for any length of time, like even as little as two months ago, I was like weeks, but it's terrible, but. Like, their fabric still is not great. Their Zweigert base is very good. But flosses, boo. I don't stitch with them. No. Uh-uh. Bleh. Now I'm like, I'm being a club. What's a trip into them? I got problems. I do Gentle Arts, Classic Color Works, and Weak Style Works. But she has them for Krynik. I know Garrett Coffee Stitcher gets Krynik. He also gets the Gentle Arts wool. Um, I know they've also got Sulky. I know Jennifer Upton was getting sulky, and I think maybe they've reached close to the end of that, and so maybe they're going to be starting back over on the sulky. I'm not sure. I may be making that up. Hmm. I think I've seen dinky dyes maybe on there. I've gotten dinky dyes by accident um, from them, so yes, they have dinky dyes. They have a bunch. So it's in her Facebook, and there's like in the announcement section, it says sign up for the nest egg here. Prices are insane. So this month, we're kind of a little bit all over the place with gentle arts but mostly in the seas so we got cornflower coral reef copper and clover and claret I get 10 skeins and I do the five yards so there's the first five that I just said then we have cider mill brown cherry wine which I already have like eight of because at one time I think I had a project with five skeins of it and then I ended up dropping that um okay sorry cider mill brown cherry wine chalk 
cast iron skillet and celery. And I'm gonna tell you right now, cast iron skillet might be an like what I consider an underrated, because it's like a grayish gray black. It's a good one. Okay, so I got those. I can put them up because I've actually already put them in my, they came early in the week, so they've already been put into my spreadsheet. I have a spreadsheet with all of the ones that I have so that when I'm going to kit something, I go, do I have it? My classic color works this month, we're kind of all over the alphabet on these. We're kind of at the end. We've got some, we're mostly at the end. But anyway, we've got Weeping Willow, Almost Auburn, Ye Old Gold, Steamed Broccoli, and Sugar and Spice. We've got those five. It's a good greens this month. And then we've got Tennessee Red Clay, Wavy Navy, Wild Berries, Tangerine, and Tartan Plaid. And I'm going to tell you, I love that Tartan Plaid. That's this blue one on the end. And Tangerine is very vibrant. Love that Tartan Plaid. Okay. I, I have decided that when I grow up, I want to be um, Cheryl McKinney and have all the fancy flosses. And I already have quite the collection. Um, my Victoria mottos are insane. I think my spreadsheet has 300 plus line items. But I'm going to tell you, they are well, well worth the money. Well worth the money. That is one I will never stop getting. And so my first month of weeks, looks like we're in the R's and S's. So the first five are Skinny Dip, Sea Glass, Sea Gold, Sedona, and Rust. So those are the first five. I love Sea Glass. Ooh, that's pretty. Shasta, Seaweed, Sally's Sunshine, Scuppernong, Scuppernong, and Santa Cruz. So pretty. This one is so unique to me. That's Shasta. Does anybody else remember drinking Shasta back in the 80s? And you could like buy it by the can and like make up your own case of them basically. I distinctly remember going to the Sam's Club back in the day. And we would get like a flat. But you got to pick your flavors of Shasta. And my favorite was black cherry. What I'd give for a black cherry Shasta. Do they even make Shasta? I don't know. We're almost to the end. All I've got left is two one, two, three stitch orders. So this one, two, three stitch order is insane. Not all of it though. Okay, so this is actually, I did not know this. When I bought this chart, it's it's a division of Little House Needleworks called Tumbleweeds. So this is the Old West Dry Goods. So I am actually going to stitch this and instead of putting dry goods, I'm gonna put Fort Worth up here because we are known as Cowtown. We are where the West begins. And so I loved that. And so I'm gonna convert it in that way. I, per whoa. Okay, now what was this for? Because I have all the flosses in here too. What was it for? I lost my mind. Oh yes, I know. Okay, so remember the happy, the Holly and Hearts mystery, three part mystery from Lizzie Kate that I got the charts. I showed it. Anyway, I went ahead and got a piece of fabric. So I got, this is an 18 count earthen. Might be my new favorite Ada from Picture This Plus. It's a little bit of a pinky. And then I got all the flosses. Now granted, some of them I am doing in DMC. And at the time, I did not know that my Michaels was still doing curbside. So I ordered them off one, two, three. But that's okay. I'm throwing my business to them. Everybody else is too. And then I also went ahead and snagged a piece of the Heartland. Because I didn't know if I wanted to do the Holly and Hearts in the Heartland or Earthen. So that will get used for sure. I picked up this 32 count tarnished silver linen. It's lakeside. It's just a small piece. I love that color. And then I picked up a insane amount more of some 25 count. And I'm actually, I have an idea for one of my charts to stitch it uh, two over two. So that it gets like really big. Oh, and I got, just because I wanted to see. This is a 32 count Lugana in murky. Everybody talks about murky. So I got murky just to see what it's like. And then I got this stack of 25 count. So I've got pewter, bone, antique white. I got another piece of potato because I'm going to use potato for one of the stacks. And if I was going to use potato for berry bowl, then I needed it. Uh, mushroom. 
ivory, another Wedgwood, another Ash Rose, and then this one was really cool. This is Vintage Smoky. It's like that model look. So I got those. Um, 123 Stitch um, did mention that they're running a little slower on their orders. I think I was on the front end of that, and so these came pretty quickly. But I, I've since placed another one. Um, I told you I've been kidding all the things. I've also been de-stashing all the things. Thank you to those of you who bought from my de-stash. Um, I don't foresee there being much more, but there are still a ton of charts, and I might run a little bit of a chart sale because the fabric's gone. Um, I actually had somebody contact me and say, hey, whatever you have left in the way of fabric, invoice me for it on the first. And I, of course, messaged and was like, are you sure? She was like, yes. And so I did. And that all went out. All right. So then my second order was not much, actually. Um, this is, I think Priscilla is stitching this. This is little, or Chelsea, one of them. Little House Needleworks Farm Life. I love it. It's based on a verse from the Book of Psalms 104.14. Um, and I just think it's so cute. One of my other orders is to get the flosses for this. Um, I did go ahead and get the remainder of the flosses for the Sewn in Friendship and Token of Love. It's the, it's the collaboration pieces between Heartstrings and Plum Street. And I'm going to stitch them as one, but I went ahead and get the flosses. I did get some called for, but I also got some that are just the DMC. And then the last thing to show is I got the first two in the Garden Club series from Blackbird Designs. So this is Basket of Cherries and Apple Orchard. And I will, I think, be stitching these all on one piece. I don't think I'm going to do the separate pieces and piece them, like, sew them together. I think I'm going to do them all on one piece. I say that, but then I've also seen it where people did the piece. I don't know. I haven't decided that yet. Anyway, you know what we haven't talked about? Any life updates. So hold on, let me grab my book. So if you've made it to this point, and you're just like, cool, I've seen all the stitching stuff, I don't want to hear what's going on in your life, I don't want to hear about what's happening in your neck of the woods, then I will wish you farewell until next week. But if you're going to hang in for some, some life lifey things, awesome. So, let's see. Lots of stitching, we talked about that. Um... We got we got a couple of new things to help out with uh, joy filled little ones, focus and things like that. So we did get a trampoline in our backyard, and that's been a pleasant thing. Except she's scared of things that fly. So we see a bug, and then we freak out, and then we don't want to go back out there. So we're working on that. Like, she's always been a bit of like I don't like nature. Like I'm good with being outside until things move. Like since little little I remember talking about this we also got these really cool things called brain flakes if you have one that loves Legos and you know things of that nature look them up they're on Amazon you get like 500 of the little brain flakes for like $13.99 or something like that I've shared them with a couple of my friends that have like real like stem mindset kids and they're very cool and she's actually pulled her like Chromebook over and looked up some other tutorials of how to build different things. She's built a sword, a tree, a whole rainbow of cats. I mean, like super fun. Um, we got the word this week from the governor of Texas that all schools will be closed until May 4th. So we are in this for longer than any of us anticipated. My husband is still expecting to go back to work on Tuesday. I don't think they're going to be doing that. Like, I don't know. He hadn't heard anything, and they won't make that call to the last minute, but they're supposed to be back up and running next Tuesday. So we'll see. That's going to make me a little fearful for him to be out amongst more people. Like, I mean, he does our little bit of grocery shopping, but he's really, like, super diligent. Um, and we're actually, now it's even ramping up more our next grocery run which is not much it's just like little things like I'm keeping stocked on milk and things like that that we and eggs and things that we go through a lot now that we're home all the time like I'm cooking eggs almost every morning so we're going through a carton of eggs in a week or less um we're not hoarding anything we're eating everything I mean I'm I might be spending a lot of money on stash I'm really not though um 
But I'm going to tell you, I'm saving a ton of money on money, on food. Anyway, because we're not going anywhere. Where was I going with that? Oh, so we are out through the 4th, mandated by the state, the governor of the state. We will see. We've had a couple of the major districts around us. We are not a district school. We are a private school. But we, but we obviously, the governor said, and we ain't listen. Several of the private schools, around, public schools, excuse me, around us have already said they're not going to reopen before. They're closed indefinitely. They have not put a date on it. Um, the date was given to us. We were originally told, well, the first thing we were told was we would be back on this coming Monday. Then it was extended another week. And now we're looking at, like, we're, as of tomorrow, we still have a month before we go back. Um, the county, one county over Dallas County, they today extended their stay-at-home order or their shelter-in-place order or whatever through May 20th. So I think that trickles down to schools. Now, granted, the big ISD had already said we're not reopening, but this is the county. So I think that that's going to force all the schools. Now, here's the thing. Our last day is May 22nd. So if we push to the 20th, we won't go back. Um, or we maybe potentially go back for two days, which would be nice because then we could have our little end of the year party. Like, I don't know. I don't know. It's just all very up in the air. Um, we finally, I think, got in our school groove this week. Um, we have found that when she wakes up about 645, we sit down to breakfast and we start working on her Bible lesson while she's eating breakfast. And we are done with school. I think the longest day this week, it, we were we went until like 10. But most days we're done by 8.30. I don't think we even went to 10. No, we didn't. I think every day this week we were done by 8.30 or 9 at the absolute latest. And so that's been great. She has been actively reading a ton. She has demolished two books in the last two days, um, which is great. And um, we're going to start seeing where we could pass those books off to because we're running out of bookshelf space because I'm just adding books. I've said, okay, you're going to have to pick some of the books you already have on your bookshelf instead of me just continuing to buy. Um, she's really into this series called Mercy Watson. It's by Kate DeCam De DeCamillo who wrote Tales of Despero. And it's a really cute story, but she's literally read one. She We had six for some reason. She read that one in literally like less than an hour sitting. They're very simple for her. She's above grade level on her reading. And so then she was like, well, do they have one through five? And I found them on Amazon very inexpensively. I bought actually the set of one through six. So she read one, all of one today. And then she took two to the grandparents. And she may end up coming home having read that one too. And they don't have any past six. So I'm kind of bummed about that. Um, I am, I do anticipate that stash will slow down because I have so much kitted. I need to chill, but I've cleared a lot out and y'all have been great at buying all my things. I realized that I had a lot of high count linen that if I'm going to kit a project, I'm looking to kit 18 count Ada or n not normally higher than 32 count linen. And I'm really liking some Lugana for some things. If I'm gonna, but I'm typically going to pull 18 count. So what I did was I de-stashed so much of my linen, and then I turned around and immediately placed that back in with color and cotton. In. So you're gonna see I have a pretty hefty couple of orders coming with color and cotton. Now, granted, one of them has my half yard for uh, consider the lilies, but I I sent my money that way, like I took it and reinvested in my stash. So like, that's what I'm doing is I'm adding things so that I'm set. Um, I'm really set. Okay. Anywho. Um, so the stitching Texas virtual is tomorrow, which is exciting. I'm a little bit nervous. Like I do this, but like, I've not done a live video. Now I can do live videos on here because I have over one K, but anyway. Okay. So, I think I was going to say something else. I was in my notes looking and seeing. Okay, what? Have anything else to talk about? Have I talked enough? 
Oh, I was going to tell you one other thing. This is the face of anxiety. Check on your folks. Check on your friends. Make sure everybody's okay. Check on your family. Because you never know what somebody is hiding. Um, I wasn't hiding. Um, I have, since I was young, had a tendency towards being an anxious personality. Um, my daughter is strangely very much like me. My mom has a tendency to be anxious. My brother as well. Um, and in the past, I have taken medication to assist me with that. But I have not been on it in over four years. The last time I was on any kind of medication for my anxiety, depression, mental health, um, mental well-being was when I was teaching in a very difficult school scenario. And it was um, it became where I was like so my high, senses were so heightened everything drove me insane I had full-on panic attacks where I literally could not breathe and thought I was dying um, but then once I was able to be out of that scenario um, uh oh I think the dog's done something bad because I hear the shouting upstairs so anyway this week I have um, I talked to my mom about everything and I know my mom has gone through it well I kind of stopped sleeping about midweek last week I could not fall asleep I could not stay asleep. My sleep was very fitful. And I started to feel like I was spiraling. Feeling those that spiraling situation. And um, so I talked to her. She was like, you've got to stop the spin. You've got to stop the spin. And I said, well, I don't know. So anyway, long story short, I'm feeling much better about things right now because I have sought help. I'm not too proud to say that. I am full of joy. I still had joy even in the moments, but I felt myself losing control. I felt myself being being scared of the feelings of having a panic attack. And I did not want to, because at the time when I would have those, my daughter was four. She was not really very keenly aware of that. And I was able to hide things from her, but she's keenly aware. And now we are all in one enclosed space. And I think some of that has to do with that we are all under each other's feet all day long. And I think it's more the fear of the unknown, this new normal, being worried about my mom still going to work every day, worrying about my dad and him going stir crazy, worried about my brother, you know, like just worried about like all of that. And just generally, like, just to concern when my husband goes to the grocery store, who he's going to encounter. Because, like, this evening he was going to go and get a few things from the Target. And he literally didn't even get out of his car because the parking lot was packed. And he came back and he was so angry. He said, there are too many people out. And they are letting too many people in the store. And so he was, he was fired up about it. And, um, there, so, anyway, long story short. Please check on those that you love and care about and just sometimes all it takes is just saying, hey, how's it going? And somebody is able to release some of that tension, release some of that anxious feeling. Just be an ear to listen. Um, you're being an ear to listen to me. Um, and it's, it's helpful when you deal with these kind of things to feel like you can talk about it. Like it's not a bad thing. Not It's not a shameful thing. Um, and there's a lot of people that are struggling right now. I have several of my students who aren't sleeping. They're fifth and sixth graders and they literally don't sleep. And I've talked to their parents and I said, I 100% I get it. Be reaching out to doctors. Like, reach out. Also, if you're dealing with those same feelings of I feel like it was starting last week in my video where I literally like had to stop a minute and take a breath. Like you forget to breathe. You're so busy, caught up in your thoughts and everything that you literally forget to like, your breathing is shallow. You're in a fog. I mean, it's just, it's, it's very hard to explain. But all it took was me sending a message to my nurse practitioner who I've known since forever. And telling her what I was going through and she said okay which pharmacy and she sent me in what I needed and um, I took 
And I think one of the things is the, the relief of knowing I had something to help me. And I am not too proud to say that I needed something to help me. And I know I'm not the only one. And that's, I'd rather be a good mom and a good wife and good to myself and continue to have joy, fully have joy. So I'm trying to remind myself, let my joy be unconfined. Find joy in this journey. And this journey is interesting. And trust in all things, trust in him. That's my personal belief. Um, so, sorry, we got a little, little sappy there at the end. A little, a little real. Um, you're going to get real with me. It is what it is. So with that, I really wish you a wonderful, happy week. This is Easter week. So this is a very exciting week for those of us who have that as part of their faith. Um, I will be back next Friday. It's Good Friday. Um, and I will be back. So, wishing you and yours a very healthy week ahead. Enjoy some stitching. Put some stitches in something, whatever it is. And find a moment of peace in all of this, whether it be sitting on your back porch with a cup of coffee, going in the garage and screaming because you just need to, Raise your hand if you did that this week. That's me. Um, and check on those that you love. And check on yourself. Check on yourself. So with that, I'm going to bid you farewell for this week. And I wish you all the best until we see each other again. Bye, friends.